Mike Tespro here. We're going to talk to you about how to play in a tiebreaker effectively. And there are four things you need to do. You want to be very consistent. You want to be really aggressive playing percentages. You want to run good plays, and then you want to reward efforts. So you've played a match, and in this situation, this is our eighth match in four, two days. One set is a match. First to six, play a tiebreaker. It's a round robin format. And we're playing our friends, so we have we kind of know what they can do, but it's very important that, and then you watch it, I'll emphasize how we run stable, consistent patterns, nothing crazy, a lot of cross courts, a lot of shots that we're used to making. And I'll talk about how I work with my partner to coordinate our strengths and weaknesses. Um, you also want to be aggressive because you want to stay with your plot line the way you've been playing, but you also want the opportunity to disrupt it as much as possible. Lastly, you want to run good plays, and I'll talk about running good plays where you plan to shot out with your partner. Finally, hit or miss, you want to congratulate your partner, and that's very important. It's a basketball thing, you high five your teammates, it's really a person thing. Even if they miss, the, they go for a bad shot, give them a high five, or they did their best effort. You know, When you're playing singles, if you miss a forehand, you don't yell at your forehand. It's just part of the game, right? So let's talk about how to play a tiebreaker mentally and effectively. Now we just run basic patterns. Bias serve. they were very aggressive in the sequence. I was lucky I didn't poach. I'm not going to poach. Turns too good anyway. Poaching creates pressure on us. Get the net. What you're trying to do as much as possible here is we take net and they're slightly staggered behind the service line. In doubles, you want to take net to create pressure and steal time for your opponent if you're a good volleyer. If you're not a good volleyer, you can create pressure on the baseline, but it's more effective. You take time away from them when you come to net like this, and it forces them to hit weaker shots. So the guy in the yellow is a little farther back, so I hit the guy in the yellow because it's always about close, close, deep to deep, and I close, but I can't finish. This is where my partner knows. Since I'm so far in, he covers lob. We played together for a long time. Whenever I close in, he covers lob. I know he's going to cover lob, and I'll switch. And I duck and switch so he has something to hit over me. The key here is to always be aggressive and work with the same partner. That way you know what's going to happen. I cover middle. There is a short angle wide open, but I'm betting it's a tough shot. I'm betting he doesn't suspect I'm in the middle of the court. It's a lot of things happening at one time. I only play like this because my partner is so far off in the red. So he's off court. I have to see the whole middle. And I'm totally praying percentages. Get lucky, hits to me. I try to get back low to him. And now I have a middle high backhand, but I catch it a little bit late. The perfect shot's down the middle, but that guy in the blue is a very good volleyer. The red shot's impossible. The angle's, I won't be able to hit it hard enough. And short angle's tough. You know, because the ball's high, I'm hitting it a little bit late, so I throw a lob. And it's more of a reflex thing than a plan thing. And I get lucky because the guy in the yellow closed in. If he doesn't step in, this lob will go over his head. You know, but they have position on us. We're the ones behind the service line. So of course, he's going to close in and we get lucky on this shot. But that's part of the tiebreaker. You take chances and in the course of the point, I can't plan this out. It just kind of happened. Oh, oh, be really aggressive. Martin and I have a plan. He gets good return and we'll cross. And that's the way we always play. Good forehand and we'll cross. We'll hug the middle, he left me, always take that middle. Even if he missed, it's a good move to make. Puts pressure on the return of serve. We high five, we talk a lot, we play for a long time together, we understand the game. I take away his backhand return, make him hit forehands, when he hits a forehand, I close the net. Unfortunately, I'm a little bit late. That's life. I made a good aggressive play. I owned up to it, high five, move on. That's the other key too. People don't reward effort in doubles. You need to reward your partner for trying to do the right thing. Stable return, get cross court away from that now. Second serve, aggressive return, one all in the tie break. Why not? We need momentum. Tied score, I just made a mistake. Why not? I'm a serve. The key was it's not a crazy shot, it's still middle. 
I just stepped into it early. And he thought I was going line. And then I thought I was going line, but I went middle. Got lucky. Now you run your best play. My best serve is a middle slice, and my best ball is a backhand short. So combine the two things in this next pattern. Yeah. Tell you what I'm gonna do. Go serve. I like this middle serve wide wide volley because I'm good at backhand volleys and I hit short. So even if he comes in, it's a tough volley for him. Right? He hits it to me. I hit short. He doesn't come in off the return. It's not a split step now, it's a split and move into the court as close as possible. Look how far in I am when I make contact with that ball. Short angle, no, no movement in the racket. You'll see it when I slow-mo and crop. You can zoom in. Come in, split. Try to bend your knees as much as possible. Take a good step. Not too much racket movement. Short angle. You hit the short angle. Even if they come to net, that's a tough volley for them. Throws a lob. Get lucky he misses a lob. And very good play for me. We're up 3 1. Now I want to run a good play. You can't do anything if they hit a good shot. I mean, if they hit a great shot, that's a great shot by him. You can't do anything. Reset, next point. We're still up 3 2. Same plan as before. Hit good for him, I'm across the poach. And that's happens, you know. We gotta fight, we gotta take the net, and I gotta be involved, okay? Ball to my partner's back, and I gotta be involved. That's the key to this match. The key is, you wanna get them off the net. And so I use the lob. Some people don't like the lob. Kinda of blues are a very good volleyer. But none of us have really good overheads. So deep, high lob. Even if he had that overhead, we might have been able to play the ball. When she comes in that, the blue shirt's a good volleyer. Take him out of the play. I got cross court. I don't know, maybe God, he might have poached. Went down the line, he might have poached. Throw the lob, come to net. But don't hit the ball back to them. You know, a lot of times you have position like this. He does a good job with the lob. He hits it right in the middle of us, my backhand and my partner's backhand. I'm deeper, so I'll cover the backhand. I'll take the lob. I'll take the overhead. But I can't hit overhead. I have to hit a backhand volley. So I play short. Because you don't play deep. If you play deep, it puts offense on them. This way they have to move in. Don't hit the baselines when they're on, they're on the baseline. Make them move to the ball. Hang short. He has to move in. I'm covering lob now. My partner's in already covering short angle. He steps in, finishes. That's what makes the team work. One of us is in, the other person covers lob. You gotta be aggressive, you have to hit to finish when you play. Very important. Four, three, partner serving. Gotta hold serve in the tie break. First serve in, first volley. Key here is look at my positioning. I do this middle positioning to try to freak them out, but it doesn't bother them at all. Keep a good cross court. I can't get to it. Partner slowly coming in. Pose a wide angle. Take the net to steal time. We are at net. They're in a staggered baseline position almost. One person's off court. Guy in the blues at net. There's a big hole between them. Creates a lot of gap responsibilities. Guy in the blue has watched the line and the middle. They transition pretty well, but that's a low volley. And that's the key. As soon as the ball went down to his knees, I close in my backhand. Hit to finish. We're friends. It's a tiebreaker, but hit to finish. They almost hit me three times in this match. I think they hit me once, actually. You know, but you gotta hit to finish. And move it, volley in the direction you're moving. Since I'm moving cross court, I just take it down the middle. He only gets hit because he tries to do this fancy thing. I think he could just try to make the volley. He might have made the volley. You know, and I wasn't trying to hit him. But you gotta hit the direction you move, that way your body weight behind the ball and goes in. I apologize to you because it's just it wasn't how I was trying to hit it. Big point. Pull away, we get this point, we win. We go up 6 3, we're gonna win this type of game easily.
can't get to it. We have position. Hard luck. That's the way life is. Whoever gets the point before match point normally wins. We get to six. We get to six first in the tiebreaker. We're playing the seven. It's a lot of pressure. But a very important point. So everyone's going to get their best stuff. Super lucky I made this shot. Go with my partner's forehand. But slow serves. He gets in position. Not going to attack me. The ball's too low. But I'm raving in case he attacks me. I have line. I'm covering the middle, sort of. I'm really covering the line because in case he hits the ball at me. But the ball is really low. He plays it safe. Goes to my partner. And my partner normally goes cross court because that's his, he's lefty. But the guy in the blue is a really good volleyer. Guy in yellow can volley also. But my partner takes a shave shot. He goes middle. I got cover. I hit the line shot. But let's look at that again. I'm covering. It's in. I can go cross. I can go line, I can lob. Lob's out of the question, there's no way. Guy's got coverage on me. Cross, the guy's right in front of me. I might not be able to make this shot. Line looks pretty open. And line is safe, high percentage. All these things will go through your head really quickly. You get lucky. Hit the right shot, cut the line. Now we gotta try to finish this. Up again, we're up, we're some gamble. Why not do something crazy? Gotta play the win. I serve after this. Why not end it now? I always believe you should gamble whenever you're up. Be very safe when you're down, but you can gamble when you're up. I think I do. I had a bad shot. Now we're not going to anything fancy. We're in the same play we've been doing. No serve, sure angle ball. Ball goes up, partner up, not to hit it. You hit your best shot here. My best serve. I just hit a safe shot, cross court, and get lucky. The key to tiebreaker. The key to tiebreaker is to be very stable. You want to be very consistent. Hit only your best shots. Don't do anything crazy. It's about getting first serves in, making your first shot, going for safe returns, making everyone play a ball. You Notice in that tiebreaker, you rarely saw any missed returns. You know, make the points, play something. Next thing is you gotta be aggressive. Try to. If you're a net player, you gotta get involved. Take a lot of balls, make a lot of movement. Even if you miss, you know, the, your movement creates pressure on the opponents. They're gonna watch out for you for the next point. Know what your, how your team functions. When I close the net and I get really close to the net, my partner covers lob. When my partner's on the baseline, I take the middle and I try to take away the backhand, for his backhand, make sure I take that ball. And try to play your opponent's weaknesses. Like the guy in the yellow was, the guy in the blue is a very good volleyer. And so we try to stay away from him as much as possible. And sometimes you get lucky and there's nothing you can do about tennis. I mean, you can't be angry if you hit a good shot. You just stay the course, keep playing. We play a tiebreaker 10 times, we might not win. We might not win 10 times, we might not win nine times, you know, it's just luck. And so you just go through a sequence, but be stable, hit good shots, and gamble when you're up and be very aggressive. Remember, it's about tennis, it's about having fun, but that's what we go through in the tiebreaker. We just kind of play. And that's one of the biggest keys for our success. Okay, so when you do the forehand, you do the back. 